Welcome to Okie Dokie Tech. Today is my pilot episode and it is my plan to produce video tutorials and reviews of old and new technology products that I enjoy using. I'm beginning today with the Raxa X4 single board computer, often abbreviated SBC, along with the official power supply and official heat sink case. Since I received this two and a half months ago, there will be no unboxing, but I have disassembled it so that you can see the proper procedure to assemble it. By the way, I bought this with my own money, so this is in no way a sponsored video. Although there will be no unboxing, I did want to show you just that it came in a nice plastic box, which I have other plans for to keep USB thingamabobs in. Now the board, as you can see, comes with two flag antennas for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth already attached and includes the real-time clock battery, often abbreviated RTC. And I've turned the antennas toward the inside and up just a little bit because they look nasty sticking out the end of the uh, finished product. The RTC battery attaches with a two conductor plug so it's not going to have temperature controlled fan speeds. It's always on and the battery has adhesive to stick it somewhere and I feel it's the least visible at the back of the Ethernet port. I think I'll also use a black marker to color the edge and make that even less visible. Mm. That is where it gets installed. And we're going to route this over here and stick it there. And as I said, put a little black on there to make it less noticeable. At least I hope it will make it less noticeable. What do you think? How's that look? With those preliminary steps taken, we can finish prepping the board by installing the 2230 NVMe drive in the M.2 slot and tightening the retention screw. I've stuck a little bit of white glue on the end of my screwdriver so the screw will stay on long enough to get it in the hole. And that finishes that step. You may have noticed that I've already installed a small heat sink on the NVMe drive. This isn't strictly necessary. It was just something that I wanted to do. I've also pre-installed Ubuntu 24.04 on the drive, but there's no need to do that because you can install the operating system after complete assembly of the X4 in the case. It's just the same as any other x86 computer. Just burn the ISO of your choice to a USB drive, boot to the USB drive, and follow the instructions. For Ubuntu 24.04, the Linux drivers were installed automatically and everything worked out of the box. You can also install other Linux flavors or Windows 10 or Windows 11. Rexa has nice documentation for this board and provides download links for Windows drivers. Next, I will install the provided standoffs into the main heat sink. And this is a heavy heat sink, weighs about six ounces. You can use either a four millimeter nut driver or use a T8 
Torx screwdriver, and that's what I'm using. They just go in the four threaded holes like this. Now let's look at the fan side of the heat sink. The fan cable, as you can see, is very short. I feel that it is a little easier to plug the cooling fan into the header before installing the board to the heat sink. So let's do that. And it will eventually go together like that. If you want to, you can remove three Phillips screws and turn the fan 120 degrees. You can see the screws right there. And I didn't find that that helped much. The cable was still too short, just in a different direction. But the upside of a short cable is it looks tidier than one that leaves a big giant loop of wire hanging out. Now we want to make sure that the heat sink makes good contact with the CPU die because the N100 processor runs hot, especially compared with ARM boards. Raxa supplies a thermal pad and some people have reported getting crumbly thermal pads. The one that was supplied with my X4 was not crumbly when I first assembled the X4, but when I tried to remove it to show how to reinstall it, it crumbled all to pieces. So this was after only two and a half months of sporadic use. So I would advise purchasing some good quality thermal pads or use a copper shim with thermal paste. That's what I'm going to do. The copper shim that I'm using is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters by a half a millimeter thick. And I'm going to use a little bit of Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. It doesn't take a whole lot to stick it down and push it down right in the middle and slide it around to make sure it makes good contact, but we don't want to have a bunch of stuff oozing out. If you get too much of it, it is electrically conductive, and we don't want that because it could get on one of our traces or components on the board and short something out. Now we're also going to put some Arctic Silver on the dies to the N100. Again, we don't want very much. Mm. And then we can just push that together and slide it around to make sure that it makes good contact. And I like to pick it up. Mm. It's stuck down pretty good. Needs a little more mashing. Because we want it to make good contact. That's pretty good. We will carefully align the holes in the board with the standoffs and put the supplied screws through the holes. There we go, that's better. and tighten them up and now all of the worrisome work is done. Now there only remains to put the rubber feet on the bottom half of the heat sink, which I have already done, and attach it to the bottom of the heat sink with the six supplied screws. Before I attach the bottom, I must say that I worry about the openness of the case. So I'll attach a piece of plastic that I cut out of a DVD case to the inside of the base 
using some double-sided adhesive that I've already put on. Another thing I should mention is that if you plan to use the GPIO pins with a flat cable breadboard like this one, you should know that you cannot simply attach it once the feet are on because it doesn't exactly line up. You can thread the flat cable through this rectangular cutout on the side of here and push it down on the headers and then attach it. But then you'll have to unattach it to get it loose. So unless you plan on leaving it that way permanently, this isn't a good solution for my use anyway. Since I have a Raspberry Pi that I use the breadboard with, I don't plan on using it with this anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and put my plastic in here because for my use, this will protect the underside. Stuck on with double-sided tape. Uh, put in the six screws. I'll spare you watching me put them all in, but the case is now finished and ready to use. One more thing that worries me about this case is that the fan can easily be damaged by someone just inadvertently putting something in there. So I feel like I want a fan guard on it. So. I dug around in my spare parts and found this fan guard and will attach it with four screws and keep my fan from ever getting messed up. So here we have the finished, fully assembled Raxa X4 SBC in its heatsink case with the added plastic bottom protective layer and the fan guard. Although I have reservations about the openness of the case, I think overall it looks pretty nice. The software side, including thermal measurements, can be the subject of a future video. I hope you like this video. If you have suggestions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more similar videos, please like and subscribe.